No matter who you are or where you live, if your passion is hunting, then make your dreams come true. Join us on a great safari and adventure as we traverse five continents in search of world's finest hunting trophies. Join the best professional hunters in the world in search for the best trophy animals. You will experience unforgettable hunting adventures and international cultures that few people on earth get to know. Share the thrill of the ultimate challenge to promote the sustained use of world's greatest renewable resources, wildlife conservation and fair chase hunting. Feel the excitement, share the passion, join the experience of the ultimate adventure that this world has to offer. Let safari season take you there. Greece, hunting ibexes at the island of Sapienza. In today's episode of Safari Season, we would witness the hunt of six hunters that would be competing for taking down the largest and only monarch of the island. For several seasons already, the Safari Season team had been successful in shooting the huge ibex, but no hunter was ever successful in approaching it at a one-shot distance. Such a clever and experienced animal, not by accident, survived so many hunting seasons in order to be living for 16 years already at the island. Ileon is a Bulgarian hunter and keen fan of mountainous hunting. His desire is to follow the largest and potentially new world record of the Cree Cree ibex. He is physically and psychically well prepared for the hardships he was about to encounter along his pathway on the island, but he has a single goal, the monarch. His motivation is not only about coping with nature, but coping with himself. The injury he suffered from the accident left him bedridden and with many metal nails inside his leg. Will the hunter find the strength it takes to get over the pain in nature? We will see in a while. Is it safe now? Yes. So we won't be in hurry, right? He wants them. <laughs> the hunters are fast to raise the spirits when starting the march and the overcoats become excessive. Let us start slowly from there, to see whether it is somewhere in the open air. So we are heading that way. The mouflon horn residues are not there because the curved horned ones have not shred them. This witnesses poaching at the island. The responsibility for protecting wildlife against poachers is borne by the Forestry Service Reserve in Kalamata, but its employees hardly did anything to cope with it. Soon, we encounter a very large ibex. From the position it is taken, it is hard to decide how big it is, but it's worth checking this out from a close distance. Soon the plane is over and the mountainous slope suddenly showed up. The hardest thing is to cope with the low and resilient shrubs while you are climbing upwards. At any time, some branch could prove to be tougher than you and you find yourself falling and rolling down the knife-sharp rocks along the slope.
At the end of the climbing, the shrubs suddenly end up and make way to the sharp rocks. If we directly climb the rock, this would lead us among the most straightforward way to the top, but it would also give us a way to the apexes that could be located above. A Kri-Kri was expecting us on top as well. The goat is young, not more than a three-year-old. The animal is young and quite naive because it is barely paying us attention. This is understandable because at the hunting regime on the island, most of the year, the animals here do not see the hunters, probably because of poachers. But these illegal hunters barely climb to the Ibex's location. Soon, a second youth is fast to approach the rock where the Kri-Kri is lying. This is very small. Both Ibexes could see us, but their curiosity exceeds the self-preservation instinct. Soon, the Mouflons go to see what the Ibexes are staring at. Since it's the first hunting day of the season, all animals perceive us as tourists. That's good. Hunting Creek Creek. What are we waiting for? The big one? What are its horns? The horns, right? <laughs> Around a meter and 30 centimeters. We should try measuring them. Yeah, tonight we'll measure them on a table. I think this is the large one. Ilion, it's the large one. It looks like it is very large. Ilion is trying to make it to a place where he would be able to step with both his feet so that he could shoot. 
This proves almost impossible along the rocky cornice where the hunter is literally hanging above the abyss. Finally, he finds a small aisle where he could barely get his soles onto. It's far from the most stable position, but there is no other. No, I don't think it's the biggest. That one is not bad either. Believe me, this one is not bad either, but it's not something special. You see, it's scaring you. It's chasing you away. To tell you the truth, this one is not bad either. If you like, you can shoot it, so that you don't go away with empty hands at the end. Are you ready for a second license? Well, it's not very big. No, this is not the big one. It's not the one from the morning. I think it's not more than 75 to 80 centimeters. While making up their mind what to do, the Ibex sensed the people's smell, the hunter's delayed shots didn't stand a chance. The other animals prudently decided to withdraw, even though they didn't rush into a panic as we expected. Just be careful not to roll down from over there. Another missed chance. The Ibexes frequently approach the hunters and the thick shrubs to see what's going on. That would be another worthy trophy for which it was worth working for. The risk of falling to get an Ibex is hardly worth it, but the adrenaline rushing in you while doing the crazy raid above the abyss should not be underestimated. It's just like a drug and only the height of the mountainous hunters who could appreciate the view of the precipice on the feet. Despite the efforts made, the Ibex had sneaked and we were about to undertake the even more difficult descent along the sharp cliffs hidden in the tough shrubs. Ilion had managed to get over the inconvenience of the numerous nails placed between his feet. Nevertheless, the most dangerous was not the pain, but the chance of getting misled at some time by a tendon or a muscle, without being able to make a well-measured move and prove to be without support above the vertical cliffs that get you to the sharp as knife blade stones in the foot.
bushes are the second challenge on the island. If they are lower than you, you still have at least one direction sign showing you where to walk. But if the shrubs prove to be as high as you or even higher, then comes the most difficult march. The fruit of the kumaru tree. They're very tasty, but nobody knows why animals avoid eating them. We tried them and nothing bad happened. They taste Swedish but contained a lot of seeds. Probably ruminating animals cannot digest them. Hence, there were so many fruit fallen on the ground. It smells of Ibex. It smells of male. There are quite a lot of mouflons at the island. Trophy hunters do not chase them because the absurd rules forbid hunters to shoot at two animals per day. Who would be that normal hunter to prefer paying the huge amounts for licensed Kri-Kri hunting and ruin the opportunity of shooting at a Kri-Kri in order to take down a mouflon? That's why mouflon overpopulation could prove dangerous not only to them, but to Ibexes. That was the result of another senseless rule for hunting on the island. Nevertheless, soon Destiny made up for it to the hunter and revealed a view of which every hunter in his shoes had dreamt of for the last five years. The monarch was on the slope and was waving its royal horns which almost made it to the sky. Even according to the most pessimistic forecast, the horns of that ibex were at least 130 centimeters long. Ilion was heading for it. It's only the absurd hunting rules at the island that could have stopped him from taking the trophy of one of the trophies at the island of Sapienza, because according to someone's assumption, the only hunting weapon allowed on the island, as well as throughout Greece, is the bow and smoothbore. 
Every hunter knows that a smoothbore, as well as a bow shooting, is precise at not more than 30 to 50 meters. What would be that ibex that would allow the hunter at such a distance? And the prohibition on using an optical sight is close to a crime towards wildlife and hunters. Because hunters are forced to wound the animals while hunting. Not because of the circumstances, but because the persons in charge of hunting organization on the island do not have even the slightest idea of ethical norms and what is the difference between hunting wild boars, driven hunts, and high mountainous ibex hunts. Yet Ilion had only what was permitted by law. Another chance, probably the last one, because time was mercilessly running out, and according to an absurd rule, the hunt had to end at 2 p.m. sharp. Ilion had 20 minutes to stalk the Ibex if he didn't want to leave the island with empty hands. The hunters had almost approached it at a one-shot distance when the wind gave the ibex evidence of the nature inherent to the creatures approaching it from the thick shrubs. That was Ilion's last stalk. Despite his aggravated physical condition and the pains, he got almost successful on two occasions to take down an ibex. He was successful in hunting even for a while the real monarch on the island of Sapienza. Funny. Feel the ex. 